Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas. And in today's video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking at a tool called Base44. Now, today's the first time that I'm using it. I've never touched it before. I just opened my account right now. And uh, you know, just looking at it right now for the first time. What we're gonna be doing today is we're just gonna be testing it out just to kind of compare it with, with what we have in, in the market, right? Other tools like Lovable or Bolt. I also want to look at the design output that it gives us and kind of go through the whole process from start to finish just to show you guys how it works and you see for yourself if you want to use it. So something that I do know is that, you know, Base44 sold their startup, sold the company for $80 million to Wix, right? So Wix is pretty big in the, you know, website building tool and website building industry, right? I wouldn't consider it the best. I actually don't like it at all. I think it's kind of like too easy, too template -y, not so much control. I'm not a really big fan of that. Maybe maybe some of, some of you are. But since that's happened, I've seen a bunch of ads on YouTube uh, for Base44. I, be, I, I Basically like maybe half of the ads that I get are from Base44 this month in August. And I do see that some people are building stuff with Base44. Like for example, this on anonymous person in Reddit built a fitness tracker that syncs with Strava data and adapts your plan based on your actual run data. So it's a pretty interesting thing. He says that he does have users, so that's also very interesting to kind of keep in mind. So yeah, let's go ahead and dive in. And before we actually dive in, what I wanna do is I wanna kindly invite you guys to my Discord community. We are a bunch of different startup founders, developers, designers from all around the world. We basically get together every single weekday and we talk about different things, different topics, different challenges that we might be facing in our life. And yeah, it's pretty cool. If you're down to kind of meet me and the other people in my, my community, feel free to join the link in the description below. And by the way, guys, um, before we start the, the plans for Base44, they have a free plan where you can do 25 message credits a month and you have 500 integration credits. I have no idea what that means or how that kind of adds up, but we'll go ahead and see. But for today's video, I'm gonna be using this starter um, starter plan right here. I, I just got it right now, like five minutes ago. Anyways, once you're in, you get this specific interface. What would you build today? Describe your app idea below or get inspired by our templates. So it's really cool that they have templates. Um, I would really like to click on this and see where to find the templates. Oh, okay, app templates over here. So we have a bunch of different apps. We have marketing and sales. We have education. And right from the get-go, I kind of see that the designs are pretty you know, they look kind of like AI generated. I would say that this interactive globe one, globe one looks pretty nice. Let's click on view app to kind of see how that looks like. Yeah, this one looks pretty cool, right? This one has, this one doesn't look like it was AI generated so much. I mean, to be fair, some of them look pretty good, like this dark glass morphic interface one. We can click on view details, view app. And okay, I mean, this looks pretty cool. We have like a custom like background over here. It's kind of, you can't really see it. It's like there's a little bit of noise happening in the background. We have different tabs over here. The design is not bad. Um, not bad at all, I would say. But it still has kind of like a hint of, you know, that it was AI generated, I would say. But nonetheless, it's not it's not bad, right? I'm just very curious to see how it differentiates with a tool like Lovable or Bolt. All right, so let's go over here. What would we like to build today? So some ideas to get started. App categories. CRM, dev, productivity. Um, I would want to maybe build some type of creative tool. Let's put it like that. We have different types of creative, creative tools. Digital art sketchpad. Okay. We have it like this. Build a digital art sketchpad. Should provide a simple drawing interface with basic tools for digital sketching and doodling. Let's go ahead and click on the styling instructions. So this looks also pretty nice. We have different style, like different style presets or style guides that we can use. So we have like neomorphism, we have glass morphism, we have material design. Honestly, I don't really like any of these. Maybe this one looks pretty cool. We can add this style instruction just to kind of see how this looks like. So we get our initial prompt and then we get like this breaker and then we have this kind of command to use this specific style for this sketchpad. So whatever, let's go back here to categories. Let's see what we have here. Okay, this just opens my, my files, which is great. So we can add like some type of image reference, of course. 
And let's go ahead and click on submit, right? It's very easy interface. Just click on send message. And we get over here on the right side, kind of like this area where the, where the app is going to be built very similar to everything else in terms of like lovable bold, right? We get a nice little animation where it says the title of our project. We get this answer from the AI kind of like confirming what it's going to build. And now I guess this is like the different steps. These are the different steps that it's um, going to implement. Let's see what we do. View changes. Okay. So that's not going to work yet. And down here in the chat text area, we have this little gear icon. We can click on it. We have AI model. We can choose something like GPT-5, which just came out this week. We have also have the ability to upload files and to discuss very similar to something like Lovable, where instead of chatting with the AI and the AI automatically like starting to implement, you can click on discuss and you can just chat with the AI, um, you know, about a certain topic and it won't use the credits to kind of create something. All right, now it's done. It says it created a sophisticated digital art sketch pad with a unique neomorphic design featuring these different things, uh, drawing tools, color, pickle, color, color picker, brush controls, and canvas management in a beautiful tactile interface. So right now we have different pages. So we have this one page and we have different components, right? This is like the dashboard, kind of like the, it's like the, okay, this is the dashboard actually. So we have the overview. This is kind of like a back end um, to kind of manage your app, right? You have the overview, you have potential users. So this is me, for example, you have the data over here, you have analytics. So it's a nice little kind of like back end system to have for your app, because usually, you know, when you use something like lovable, you'd have to connect it to Superbase, and then Superbase, you'd see the different databases, you'd see where your users are. So it's nice that it kind of does this for you and it doesn't use this third party tool. And now what we can do is we can click on the preview to kind of see how this looks like. And I can see that it's loading and boom, we get this, right? We get this, you know, neo neomorphic uh, style. I'm not a big fan of it. I think that um, it's kind of, you know, I'm not a big fan of the design, right? But uh, maybe we can change that later, right? So we have, these different colors. So that's great. The, the way that it reacts is pretty good. So it does pr do a pretty good job with this neomorphic style. I would say in some cases, I would say like maybe more for this one, I wouldn't say more for, I wouldn't really say for these bigger buttons, but for these smaller buttons looks nice. We can adjust the brush size. We can adjust the opacity of the brush, right? So we can do something like this and then the opacity would be less in some, in some cases, I guess. We have an eraser, we can draw lines, I guess. Not really working, but okay. And then we can undo certain things, right? Now we also have this visual edit tool down here. So if I were to, for example, click on this, we could adjust certain things. We can adjust the background color, text color, spacing and advanced Tailwind CSS or, or classes, sorry. So a tool that I like to use is something called Magic Path. And when you click on a component inside of your creation, you can, you know, actually adjust more things like the gap. You can make it flex. You can make it distributed in a certain direction. You can align it in a certain direction. You can wrap things. So, the, you know, the design capability here is much stronger than in something like Base44. And by the way, guys, this tool is, you know, completely for free. You can get you can use up to 20 different credits a month and five a day. And we basically do like design competitions every single week. So you have a chance to win 200 a week. Say that we want to add more controls. Maybe we don't know exactly what types of controls, but we want to add more types of controls underneath the canvas. And so I'm going to click on this discuss button down here. So, um, so we can like brainstorm. I want to add more design controls. Under the canvas, what can we add, right? We can ask it a question and then base 44 is thinking, right? It's gonna take some time to think. So I guess it's using GPT-5 to actually use, to, to think of this, maybe not. So it says, that's a great question to enhance the design capabilities of your digital art sketch pad, sketch pad and fit them underneath the canvas. Um, there's different things like shape tools, fill tools, background customization. All right. so. 
which of these students, they, they, let's say like they all sound interesting. And something that, that I want to see is if it gives us like a call to action, because when we use something like lovable, when we build with lovable, it gives us, it doesn't ask us for more questions. It like, it gives us like a call to action. Like you want to implement this and you say yes. And the same thing is with magic path as well. Like you can ask it a question. So I can say like, what else can we implement here? It says good question. You can add these features. Let me know which one interests you. We can say all of them, right? And it says, awesome. I'll add shape text tools, text um, image upload, blah, blah, blah. So I can just copy this question, right? And I can go into lovable and open this chat mode, click on paste. And what's going to happen is that it's going to start thinking and it's going to give us some results. And then down here, we have this implement the plan button, which I really love from lovable. And I feel that that's kind of missing here in this discuss uh, version from, from uh, base 44. Anyways, going back into the actual workspace, I want to go into the app templates. Or actually, let's look at the integrations, right? I think the integrations is a big thing to kind of look at. So right now we have about 24 different integrations, everything going from eToro to Monday.com to OpenAI uh, to Slack, Twitter. I mean, I guess you can add other types of integrations. Like for example, that example that we were looking at in Reddit with the Strava app. So let's maybe download one of these templates, right? Let's maybe get this one, clone this task management flow app. And it's cool because it clones pretty quickly. We don't have any like chat history. We just have this clone right right now looking like this. And inside of our dashboard, we have this, right? We have the same type of data as in this in the previous drawing app. And what I want to do is I want to integrate OpenAI. Maybe we can add some type of little chat bot on the bottom right corner. So I'm going to say add a chat bot in the bottom right corner. I want to add my OpenAI, OpenAI uh, API key to chat with the data, right? So let's go ahead and click on enter. All right, now it says users just need to click the icon and add their OpenAI API key in settings. What's cool is that when I publish this app and I click on the link, there's already like a login flow or, or a sign up flow. So I'm just gonna continue with Google. And it's actually super cool that the Google authentication works with one shot here in base 44, but there's no way for me to really Oh, here's where I add my OpenAI key. I just want to say I want to store my OpenAI. Oops, I want to store. I'm going to say I want to store my OpenAI key so that all users can use it with the chatbot. Let's go ahead and click on Enter. So now it says I have up, updated the application to use a shared OpenAI key. Now an administrator can set a single key for the entire application, and all users will be able to use a chatbot. So the new admin settings page is available for users with the admin role to manage the settings. So, so there's like a new admin page, I guess. I wanted to use it. Okay, so here is the shared API key. So what I can do is just add my API key over here. And then once I add that, it should work. Now, for the moment that we've all been waiting for, I want to basically use the same prompt in base 44 and with other types of AI apps Right, I'm going to open them in a new tab, use the same prompt, and I want to test out you know, the design quality with the first shot for each one of these tools. All right, so if you guys are ready, let's go. All right, so base 44, create a modern SaaS landing page for a chatbot assistance service with AI-powered conversions, smart responses, and seamless integration across platforms. I'm not going to use any of the styling instructions. I'm just going to click on Submit. Going to do the same thing here with Lovable, click on Submit. Going to do the same thing in Magic Path, click on Submit. In Bolt, we're just going to click on Enter, I guess. Now we can click on Enter, okay? That was weird. And on V0, just going to do the same thing. All right, and now the designs are done. We basically get this one from Base44, you know, Pretty, pretty standard for, for an AI tool, right? You have these gradients, you have all of these different colors for the icons. It's, pre it's pretty much a pattern in all of these different tools. Lovable is pretty much the same thing. I guess you have a little bit more of like a uniqueness to it without these colorful icons, but there are a few things like these hiccups, a lot of these gradients, right? The same types of gradients here, it's blue and like a teal, and here it's like purple and blue. So you get that. 
Now in Magic Path, you get a little bit, some, you get something a little bit different, right? You get this more of a minimal look, which looks very nice. It doesn't really look like it was AI generated, and also similar to what, uh, and also similar to what Lovable has, for example, you have these different sections, these like cards that have like a more unique look to it. It's not really like different types of colors, and you get a preview of the chatbot over here, which is nice. Bolt, pretty much very similar in terms of colors to Lovable. A little bit different, but you know, I don't really like the quality so much. Nothing special at all. So yeah, guys, let me know who the winner was. What do you guys think about Base 44? Do you want me to do more videos on this? Do you have any more questions regarding Base 44? Please let me know down in the comments below. And you guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.